Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening for the Navigating Career Fairs webinar. My name is Dr. Mary Catherine Arnold, and I am the Director of Student Affairs here for the online campus of South College. Before we get started, I would just like to remind everyone that you have all been muted. It's important to note that should you have any questions throughout today's presentation, that you type them into the questions and answers box that's either at the top or the bottom of your screen. I'll set some time aside at the conclusion of today's presentation to review all of the questions and concerns that have come through. I also wanted to remind everyone that this presentation is being recorded. So although I do ask that you all take some notes throughout today's presentation, if you happen to miss any of the information, you can always access the recording by emailing me directly, which my contact information will be on the final slide, or you can access the recording by emailing me through any of the reminder emails that you would have received leading up to today's session. In addition, I will be sure to have this posted on our YouTube page as well, so that way you can review it at your earliest convenience. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and begin discussing how to navigate career fairs. So today, our goal is to cover a couple different pieces of career fairs. So we want to first start off by talking about what a career fair is, so that way you can get a good idea for what you can expect when going into a career fair. We'll also discuss the various types of career fairs that exist out there, as well as how to locate these and what you should wear and how you should prepare for going into a career fair. And then that also will cover how we should behave while we're there, as well as what types of steps we should take to follow up and the benefits of career fairs and attending career fairs. Like I said before, we'll also end the presentation today with a questions and answer session. So a career fair or otherwise known as a job fair, career expo, hiring fairs or job expos, it is an exhibition for employers, recruiters and schools to meet with prospective job seekers. There are a lot of different types of career fairs that are out there. I would say that our most common one and most popular types are gonna be the general admittance job fairs. These are typically held in halls, community centers, convention centers, et cetera. Usually when we're talking about these general admittance job fairs, we're talking about over 30 employers or 30 companies coming and lasting for um, a couple of hours, if not a couple of days. So these tend to be pretty lengthy um, they tend to give you opportunities to come and go and to meet a bunch of different individuals to try and get your contact information and your resume out there. There also are some single topic fairs. So single topic fairs are when we're talking about only organizations from a similar or specific industry that are in attendance. Um, these may have current job openings that they're recruiting for, or they may just be there to provide you some general information about the organization itself. We also have single employer fairs. So this occurs whenever we only have one employer that with multiple openings that comes in and talks about their openings. So it could be that they have openings at different branches or departments, um, or it could be something where they have a lot of openings in their one branch. These may not only have recruiters attending, but they may also have some of those key stakeholders attend as well, including management members. So this can be a really great way to not only get your name known, share a little bit about your background, but also get the chance to meet the individuals who are able and who are, are the ones who get to call the shots. And then we also have our virtual career fairs. So these are, these, there are many different variations when we're talking about virtual career fairs. And um, they tend to not be very common just because they tend to be very costly to hold. Now with COVID, these are probably going to become a little bit more regular, more um, available to individuals. I can tell you that even with the single topic fairs and single employer fairs, I have seen a bunch of different schools. I've seen a bunch of different organizations who are hosting their own virtual career fairs to try and get them um, and to get them, get their name out there and to get individuals to be interested in, in attending and learning a little bit more about their company and their openings. Um, in order to find out a lot about these virtual career fairs and when they're happening, I would say that you really wanna become an active member on LinkedIn, um, really start following some of those recruiters for the organizations that you're interested in. So that we, you'll know, cause they tend to share their flyers and their information about these virtual career fairs. Virtual career fairs tend to also be very similar to that general admittance job fairs in the fact that many employers 
from a lot of various fields and industries tend to show up at once and they'll meet with you virtually through the computer screen. Um, there, some of them you may have the video options, others you may just have voice. Some you might not have any options, but you might just have an avatar um, that's interacting with that recruiter's avatar. So um, generally though, you know, when we're talking about this, you're not gonna be face to face with them. Um, you might, again, like I said before, you might have that video capability depending on the platform that they're utilizing, um, but it will depend on, on what platform they're going through, what companies they're going through to, to be able to hold their virtual career fairs. So let's go ahead and talk about how we should locate career fairs and what you can do to locate career fairs. So there are a couple different resources that you can use. One of the most common ones um, for locating career fairs around your area is still going to be through your newspapers. So you definitely want to, you know, try reading articles and, and keeping in touch with them. Um, a lot of times, you know, once you're able to find when one happens, a lot of times these types of events happen on an annual basis or a semi-annual basis. So, you know, maybe once a year, twice a year. So you'll start to get a rhythm for what weeks that they tend to try and hold their career fairs so it can help you to kind of meet those other individuals. You also can go in and this is a great way. It's very, it's free, it's easy to access as long as you have internet capabilities. Um, you can always go through and look at different websites. So I've included a list of a bunch of different websites that are specifically implemented for job fairs and career fairs that you can go and you can use to locate. Um, I wanted to make sure that we spend a little bit of time so that way if this is something of, that's of interest to you that you're jotting down this information so that way you know and you have the links that you can utilize. The last one in this website list is just for my military individuals, so my veterans um, and active military. So I do want you to be aware of that. But when we're talking about the nationalcareerfairs.com, jobfairsin.com, um, e-career fairs, they can be used by anyone and they have availability for, for anyone with any type of background. Again, you're also, I mentioned this earlier with the LinkedIn following recruiters, um, but you're also really going to wanna stay abreast of social media as well. Social media is a great way to get out word of mouth, um, share these events without having to really make a, have, have, have some type of huge amount of costs associated with it. So it, a lot of times it's free advertising for these companies and for these organizations. So definitely, you know, be sure to follow different companies and organizations on social media, follow different recruiters on social media. So that way when you're able to find these types of things that you are aware that these are happening. And then also making sure that you're going through and you're um, reaching out to our South College ground campuses. Again, during COVID right now, we've seen um, we've kind of backed off from this because we want to make sure that we're creating very clean and safe environments for our students, our staff, and our employer relations. Um, so this is something that we haven't had a lot, but different campuses are also hosting things like job talks where they're having recruiters come in and just talk and present about their company. Um, so very similar to some of those um, individual employer career fairs that we mentioned earlier. So these are things that you wanna keep in mind, you wanna stay abreast of, you wanna reach out if you're located near campus, reaching out to that campus and finding out more information about what type of job talks they're gonna have, if they're having any, um, what companies they're for, what types of positions they're recruiting for, because they can be a great source to locate your career fairs. But once you know when a career fair is happening, the next piece is really starting to prepare for that career fair. So the first step that you wanna do in order to start preparing for that fair is researching the companies that are attending. So once you've located what career fair is happening and when and you plan on attending it, you wanna start looking at the organizations that are going to be attending that career fair. Most job fairs will have the companies who plan on attending ahead of time, either available on a website or a registration information. Review the openings that they are looking to hire for and see if you're interested in any of those types of positions or if they're in your field of study. If interested, you wanna find some way to keep it organized. So again, some of these um, will have like a registration page or through like an application that you would download on your smartphone where you can make notations throughout that platform or others, you can just print them off, highlight, circle, whatever it may be, just that way you can keep organized. When you're also doing your research, you're gonna wanna see if they offer a map ahead of time as well, because this is going to help you to navigate the venue. 
So going into it, you're going to want to know what companies do you want to hit first? What ones are your top priority? Where are they going to be located? Especially if it's in like a big convention center, um, then you want to you want to be able to navigate through the different tables and the different venues that you need to go to and that you want to go to in a timely fashion and in a way that's going to maximize your time while being there, but also going to maximize your efforts. So if they happen to have a map ahead of time, um, it's going to really help you to know and, and plan kind of your traveling, um, your travel by foot through these different venues. Now, in addition to researching the companies and knowing where they're going to be placed, you also want to make sure that you're bringing resumes. Resumes are a huge component because what's going to happen is these recruiters are one, getting the chance to meet you face to face. When they're meeting you face to face, they're now putting a face with your name. And if you're able to hand them a resume at that point in time, they're going to remember or they might now be able to notate on the resume that you give them what they liked about you, what types of things that you could offer. Because when they go back, especially if they have a comp or if they have a position that's open, they're going to be looking to fill that with the people that they met. Um, they already, you've already kind of gotten past that weird, awkward phone screen or that initial interview, because now at this point, they have an idea of your professionalism uh, and of who you are as a candidate. You also want to make sure that you're dressing professionally. So when we're talking about these career fairs, yes, that means you want to dress exactly as you would when you're going into an interview. So again, I always try and recommend a full-blown suit. I know that not everyone has access to a full-blown suit. If you don't, or if you can't afford one, there are things like your consignment shops that you can always go to, um, you know, like your Goodwills, they tend to have a lot of suits on hand for very cheap price. And a lot of these are not weird looking suits. A lot of them are normal suits because think about it. Most of us, unless we're in kind of that old school banking type of career, a lot of us, we're not dressing up in a full blown suit every day to go into the office. Um, so if we're not doing that, then yeah, we probably only have one or two suits that we might wear once, maybe twice a year. And if we only wear our, our suits once or twice a year, then that's going to, you know, we, we might be more inclined to grow out of it uh, um, a little bit quicker than we would our normal day-to-day -day clothing. And when we do that, then we, have, we, we tend to donate it or we tend to give it away. And then we go and we buy ourselves a new one the next time that we need one. Um, so it, a lot of times these suits are very lightly worn, if anything, um, and that they're available to you. So you can just go in, get them and, and for a very cheap, low cost. Now, if you don't have that option either available to you, then you know you still wanna dress as professionally as possible. For my guys, I always say dress slacks, dress, dress shirt, a tie if at all possible. Um, you know, your dress slacks, they can be black pants, they can be gray pants, they can be blue pants, they can be khakis. Um, no matter what, we're definitely going to wanna pair them with some dress shoes. That's going, and our shoes should always match our belt. So if we have brown shoes, then we have to have a brown belt. If we have black shoes, we have to have a black belt. Um, you know, and then we also want to make sure we're, we're dressing professionally. We're avoiding those high white socks. You know, we want something that's going to, whether it's an argyle sock or just a black sock, black dress sock, whatever it may be, we want to make sure that we are in that professional atmosphere. For my females, um, you know, if you don't have a full blown suit, it's perfectly fine. If you have dress slacks and a nice blouse, a nice skirt and a nice blouse, regardless, make sure that you're not wearing anything that's too overly sheer, nothing that's low cut. Um, you know, I always say if you're wearing skirt, wear pantyhose. I know I hate pantyhose, but they give you that finalized vision and that finalized look. So you should always wear pantyhose with your skirts or your dresses. Um, even a nice dress is acceptable or a nice sweater. Um, you know, I understand that it could be depending on the time of year, but we do want to make sure that we are dressing professionally and we're demonstrating our um, demonstrating who we want to be, which brings me to this next point about thinking about your career goals. So when you're preparing for the career fairs, one of the things that you want to do is you really want to think about what your goal is moving forward. You're going to go in and you're going to be meeting people from nothing. You probably never have met it or seen any of these individuals. So when you go in, you're going to want to be prepared with talking about your career or what types of jobs you're looking for. And this is a lot of going, this is going to come hand in hand a lot with what we call an elevator speech. Because in your elevator speech or your elevator pitch, it's a 30-second overview of who you are, where you want to go, what you want to do 
what you're looking for. And that's going to really help you to showcase that you are taking your job search seriously and that you're thinking about your career development overall. You also wanna be prepared to show initiative. So when I'm talking about this piece, I mean that when we're going into these career fairs, these recruiters are not gonna come up to us. We need to put ourselves out there and go up to them. If you're an introvert, I know that this can seem very intimidating and it can seem very, very challenging. But keep in mind that this is going to be so much easier than if you were to go right into an interview because you're having that opportunity to really meet the individual, to be able to give them that first impression and still be a little bit more of yourself in a lower stake atmosphere. You also want to make sure that you're showing enthusiasm. Don't be afraid to take that first step and approach the recruiters. Make sure that it looks something that you make sure that you you're giving your appearance as to something that you want to do. Um, something that you're not being forced to do or something that you don't feel like you're obligated to do in order to obtain a new job. Be excited. Um, be excited, even if you aren't excited at the fact, because if you are an introvert and you're not excited about the fact that you need to go out there and put yourself out there, be excited at the fact that this could help you to skip a couple steps in the application process. Um, you know, be excited at the fact that you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one time with that recruiter that typically, if you were just applying online and submitting your application, you you might never have because your resume, your application is generally going to go through what's an app, what's called an applicant tracking system first, which is going to remove that personal connection that you could immediately get. Where now, this is, if anything, that's a way to be excited and to show your enthusiasm about being there at a career fair. And then don't forget to remain calm and confident. And I know it's very, very tough when we're talking about remaining confident and calm in a situation where maybe we aren't used to, or maybe it's something that we haven't had a chance to go through a lot lately. Um, you know, if we're remaining calm and confident, that's really going to help us to move forward um, and really going to help us to demonstrate our true professionalism in our true selves as a career, um, a career professional. So we, I mentioned you want to bring your resumes. So what exactly are we doing? Well, we are bringing approximately 10 resumes. You will want to leave each recruiter with your resume. So in, in, especially if they're collecting it. So after you leave, they're going to make notations about what they liked about you. Then it's going to, they're going to use your resume as a piece that's really going to help them to remember who you were. If you visit or if you want to visit more than 10 companies that might be at that career fair, then be prepared to bring more than the number of companies that you plan to stop in on. Try to point your resume on and try to print your resume on resume paper because that's going to show that you're really professional. But the other thing to think about with your resume is that you want it to try and be geared towards the types of positions and the types of hiring managers and recruiters that you might be talking to. And that brings me to the Take the time to prepare your resume. So you want to proofread your resume. Recruiters will be getting lots and lots of resumes at this event. It's important that yours stands out from the crowd. So many people will not prepare for career fairs until the night before. Don't be like that. Guys, when I was in my undergraduate, I did the exact, the exact same thing. I realized that there was a career fair happening in two days. And all of a sudden, I panicked because I knew I wanted to attend. I didn't have a resume. I didn't even know how to build a resume. So we want to make sure that we've prepared our resume. It is number one thing that we want to make sure that we're leaving that with the hiring managers. Those who rush creating their resume, it's going to show. Um, because I, I can tell you, and I'm speaking from personal experience, the very first career fair that I went to when I didn't have a resume, I quickly drafted something because I figured something was better than nothing. And yes, that's true. But when I got home, after the event and I pulled out my extra resumes, I saw that there were spelling errors. I saw that it wasn't consistently formatted. There were so many things that I was embarrassed about. And I was like, well, I don't think anyone's going to call me. And I had one or two companies that followed up with me, which was surprising to me, but it wasn't what I had hoped for. And a, lot, a large part of that I think has to do not necessarily with how I appeared, um, and how I presented myself, but more with how I presented myself on paper. And at the end of the day, they're taking that piece of paper with them. So that was permanent. <laughs>
So after the recruiter, you know, and that's the other thing to think about. So the recruiter is not just getting your resume at this type of event. They're getting lots of others. They're not going to really look through it a ton when they're talking with you. Um, but they might, when they go back after the event, when they're going back through about everyone who stopped at their table, um, and they're going to kind of go through and they're going to closely look at those resumes and toss out anyone who's not impressive. Um, so that means that it, it isn't just about being able to interact with them, but it's really about being able to provide that true professional feel when you go and meet them. And that's, yes, I made a good impression with what I could say and what I was speaking and how I was presenting myself. But at the end of the day, that wasn't enough to communicate what I really needed to communicate with. Now, when we're talking about your, your resume, send it to your career services representative or the career services department, either through the optimal resume suite or, you know, send it via an email. It doesn't matter to us. Just make sure that you're getting it to us before you go to one of these events. Some of the major things to look for, again, include content, grammar, spelling errors, and consistency. The last major thing when we're talking about your resume is try and keep your resume general to the industry and the types of positions that you're interested in. Um, so I know that it's tough because generally speaking, when we would be applying to these positions, we would be applying for a very specific role that stood out to us. But since we're unsure of the positions in that company or what that company is hiring for, we may want to keep it general. But keep in mind too, the other thing is that when we're keeping it general, the general resume should be able to speak to many different jobs and be more geared towards the overall type of position or the industry. So avoid using things like an objective on your resume since you want to keep your resume general. Objectives typically state that the specific job that you're looking for and the skills that you hope to gain from those positions. You also want to try using a background summary or a professional summary if possible. Again, here on your screen, you do see a brief example of what we're talking about, what your finalized um, resume should look like, but we still want you to bring it to us, to send it to us ahead of time so we can make sure that it's still geared towards that. Now, I have had some students who have asked me in the past, they have had the question where, what if I did my research and I saw that this one job, this one company I really want to work for is attending this career fair, and I prepared a resume specific for one of the jobs that I have, that I saw on their website. Can I bring a separate one? Absolutely. That's not a problem. You can bring a resume that's specifically geared towards that position. The only thing to think about when doing that is that if your resume is geared towards that specific position, that you want it to be very, um, you want to have it separated and you want to be very organized so that you know that you are handing it to that specific recruiter from that specific company regarding that specific job. So career fair attire. So I briefly touched base on this, but I wanted to go a little bit more in detail as to what you're going to be looking for um, and what the ideal situation is. So again, my men uh, typically say a single breasted suit, if possible, you want to make sure that everything is clean and pressed and that you're trying to, if at all possible, keeping that suit to being either navy or gray. The reason why we want to try to keep a suit to either being navy or gray is just because a black suit is considered very formal. A lot of times when we're wearing black suits, we're wearing them at either funerals or weddings, um, which tend to be pretty formal events. So we wanna try and keep it to a navy or a gray suit because that's going to help us to stand out. It's going to help us give us a professional feeling without being overly, um, without being overly professional and without being overly formal, I should say. My females, like I said before, suits you can do, for females, you can do black, navy, or gray. A light colored or neutral blouse is really what I would recommend underneath the suit. So trying to keep with like a white, a khaki, a tan, um, a gray, a, a blue could even work. Um, try not to go something, try not to be something um, too vibrant. I know some of us can think and some of us will say, well, if I wear a bright color, then that means that I'm going to be remembered. Well, the thing is about bright colored is that you could also be too distracting with what you're wearing. I mentioned this earlier. Um, if you're going to wear, you know, a skirt or a dress, make sure that it you're wearing pantyhose underneath it. Skirt suits can be just as acceptable to pants suits. However, the one thing whenever you're keeping in mind or you're wanting to wear a dress of any sort or a skirt of any sort, be sure that you are very cognizant about that length of where the skirt is hitting you on 
on your leg. It must hit the knee. And if you wear this, you must have pantyhose on. Shoes. So here's the thing with career fairs. You have to remember that career fairs, especially in those larger settings, you're going to be walking a lot. So you definitely want comfortable shoes. If you're going to wear heels, don't wear stilettos. Make sure that they're a mid-sized heel. The other thing you want to think about is that when we're talking about the business world, business world is very professional. So this means that in order to give that professional finalized picture and image, we have to have closed toe shoes. So no peep, no peep toes. We want closed toed shoes. And we typically want to try and stick to a neutral color, such as your black, or if anything, um, you know, if brown would work and would match, then you could also do pea brown. Now, as far as nails, I get the question asked a lot, well, can I have fancy nails? You can. Um, typically though, if you're going to have nails, try and keep it neutral color. So we want, we want it to be as close to our natural skin tone um, because we don't want to become too distracting. So a neutral color, a tan, you know, a black, even a white is fine too, but nothing too showy, no fluorescence, um, you know, nothing that's going to be distracting. We also want to make sure that our hair is away from our face. So um, I typically like a half up, half down, where my hair is half half up um, so that I am not fiddling it, but yet I still have some length because maybe I'm afraid that if I pull my hair back, I'm going to look too, too masculine and I don't like the way I look with that. Again, you have to be confident when you're going to these types of events. So you want to you want to find the balance between being professional and confident. Um, you also want to avoid doing a ton of makeup. So if you are someone who likes to wear makeup, keep it very neutral. Again, don't make it overly flashy. No crazy smoky eyes, no vibrant um, eyes, you know, try and keep it very minimal. Again, we also want to avoid short skirts, anything with weird textures, wet hair, strong perfume, distracting um, and distracting jewelry. The other thing for both my men and my female is females are to make sure that if you have tattoos that are visible, that they are covered up with either band-aids, flesh colored tape, some like foundation or, you know, some type of makeup that's going to help to cover them. So let's talk about how we should be behaving when we go to a career fair. The most important thing is that we need to remember to be professional. Treat this as if it is an interview. So we want to show our confidence and we want to show initiative and be prepared. So again, that means that we're going to really want to stay and, and focus on preparing our elevator speech and preparing some of those questions and those things that we want to ask these recruiters, how we want to engage these recruiters prior to going to this event. You also always want to introduce yourself. Always be the first to speak. Reach out your hand and give a firm handshake. Again, with COVID happening right now, we're probably not going to be shaking any, anyone's hands for a little bit of time. But once it becomes something that is more acceptable again in our society, then you want to make sure that you are practicing your handshakes um, and that you will give a firm one, but not overly aggressive. The other thing to keep in mind is that when we are talking about reaching out and you know going for that handshake is that we want to do this because it's going to create that first impression and it's really going to show the recruiters just your overall professionalism when we're also talking with them make sure that we're maintaining eye contact guys these things these events can be extremely distracting because you have people coming in and out left and right um, you see different tables you have different thoughts that might be popping in your head as you're going through them no matter what we always want to make sure that we are showing eye contact so that we're showing that we're engaging in the conversation that we're having with those recruiters um, and that we're also demonstrating that we really want to speak with them. It's not that we wanted to speak to the table to the right or to the left and they had too long of a line, but that we are very interested in what this employer and this recruiter has to say. It also shows that you have authority and that you exude confidence as well. So when we're able to maintain the eye content contact, it's being professional, it's being respectful but it's also showing that we are confident in who we are. Also want to keep it to a one minute long introduction. So keeping it brief on our end, we don't want, we just want enough to provide a brief introduction that's going to get that conversation started. Keeping it to a minute long is going to allow you to provide the hiring manager with just a brief overview of who you are without boring them. And that's going to allow a more natural conversation 
to just occur and become and become you know part of you being able to ask your questions and then being able to ask more about yourself when we're talking about what we should be talking about and including in our introduction it's going to be our name our major you know our area of studies our expertise our career interests skills and abilities and why you chose to to visit this company so an example of what you might say is you might say something like Hello, I'm Mary Catherine Arnold. I'm currently in, going into my last semester for my Associate of Science in Allied Health, or I'm sorry, my Associate of Science in Health Science at South College. And I'm interested in breaking into the healthcare field. I saw that you are currently looking to fill some entry level positions in the registrar departments of your hospitals. Can you tell me a little bit more about those? As you can see, I mentioned my name. I mentioned what I'm studying. I mentioned that I'm going to be graduating soon. I mentioned what I'm interested in doing, and I mentioned why I wanted to reach out to that company. So I covered all my grounds so that way the recruiter can now have that conversation with me. Here's the one thing about anyone in recruitment. A lot of times recruiters are extroverts. They love going to these events because it gets them out of the office, gets them away from their regular positions and allows them to finally meet these individuals that they've had to just sift through resumes before and never get the chance to really get get the opportunity to meet them. Acting natural allows them to see your personality so that they're going to remember you and get a positive feeling when you apply for that position for that company. Just remember that when you're having that conversation with these individuals that you're asking questions. You wanna find out about the type of individual that they're looking for and, and as far as what skills, attitude, education, knowledge, and experience that they're looking for when they're looking to fill these roles. So be sure to ask those types of questions. Make sure you know what kinds of skills and experience do you look for in, you know, these are the types of questions you can ask. So you can ask the recruiter, well, what kinds of skills and experience do you look for in the employees that you hire? What are the characteristics of your most successful employees? You can even try something like, what kind of entry level positions or internships exist within your organization? You could try something like, well, how long does the hiring process take? What does it typically consist of? What percentage of applicants are eventually hired? What is the retention rate of those applicants? So you're trying to find out, you know, if I was to apply and be offered a position, am I likely to stay here with this company? At the end of the day, I don't know about you guys, I don't like the job search. I don't wanna be job dumping if I don't have to. So um, being able to kind of find out the information about that retention rate, that's gonna be something that also sticks with them and it's going to be a good positive uh, impression that you can make by asking a question like that. You can also ask more general questions about like, what is your organization's culture like, as well as how do you expect your employees or do you expect your employees to relocate or how much travel is involved with, with these types of positions? You know, it depends again on the type of positions that you're looking for, but you're gonna know that prior to going into these events. So you're going to be prepared to ask some of these questions. You also want to make sure when you're trying to have that conversation with this individual that you're discussing your strengths and trying to find and, and clearly demonstrate how you believe your strengths are going to fit into the types of individuals that they're looking for in the, or into the types of positions that they're trying to fill. They may ask you questions to help you with the conversation as well. They might ask you things like, well, tell me more about yourself or what, did you, what do you know about our organization or why did you decide to seek a position with us in the first place? They might even ask you to describe the ideal job for you following graduation, or they might ask you, well, tell me about any leadership responsibilities that you've, you've had or you've held. Or they might even ask you, well, how did you become interested in this field or industry? So they might be looking to find more about who you are as a person, where your passion stems from. Or they might even say, well, do you have a geographic preference in mind? And if so, why or where? Um, so that way they can go back to their company and if it's something where you're looking to relocate, they can go back and they can say, oh, well, you know what, we actually have these openings that, that I think you'd be great for right in the area that you told me about. So, you know, I would encourage you to apply for it. So these are all types of things that when you're having the conversation, you're getting the opportunity to learn more about the company and the company and that hiring manager recruiter is getting to learn more about you without it having to go through all the very formal steps. Now, the last major thing when we're talking about behaving at career fairs is closing the conversation. So how do we actually end this conversation when it's like, it's time for me to move on. I've gotten most of my questions answered. I think you have a good idea about who I am. I see that there's a line behind me. 
So once you're ready to end the conversation, you just say, well, you know, John, it was great meeting you. Thank you for your time. Um, do you happen to have a business card or can you share with me your contact information? Some recruiters may not bring business cards because they may simply just direct you to their website. Um, others may run out of business cards by the time you get up to them. But no matter what, you still want to make sure that you're asking for the contact information because you're going to use this in the next step that we're going to talk about when we're following up. You do also want to make sure when you're indicating after you indicating that you're ready to kind of move on to the next company or the next recruiter, you also want to make sure that you are stating back to them that, again, I'm really excited to, I'm really looking forward to hearing back from you again more about these positions. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're taking care of, of all of those pieces. Now, once you've gone through and you've had that face-to-face -face interaction with that recruiter or that virtual face-to-face -face interaction with that recruiter, we want to make sure that we're sending a thank you email or a card or a letter directly to them. Do not wait too long after the, the job fair. Generally, I'm going to say you want to do this within a day of the, that job fair. When you are sending your thank you correspondence, you want to say something like, as we discussed, I am very enthusiastic in becoming a part of your organization due to my hard work ethic, my organization, and my attention to detail. When you are completing this email, you want to, again, thank that recruiter or that hiring manager for his or her time. And then you also want to make sure that you're composing the letter in the same manner that you would after an interview. So picking up on very specific things that you mentioned during your conversation, um, highlighting things about why you're the, the ideal candidate or the most qualified candidate for it. Um, so a lot of different pieces like that. So I did want to give you an example of what your follow-up should specifically look like when all is said and done. So here on your screen, you're going to see just a general follow-up email that you can actually send. So as you can read, it says, Miss Thomas. Typically, I would say you might want to put a dear Miss Thomas. Um, thank you for taking the time yesterday at Coast to, at Coast to Coast Career Fair to speak with me about opportunities at Rapid Recovery Center. After speaking with you, I feel that my clinical experience with the Williamson County surgery experience has provided me the skills I'm sure will be valuable to rapid recovery for the RN position. I wanted to inform you that based on our conversation yesterday, I've applied for the opening. I also have attached my resume to this email as well. Thank you once again for speaking with me. I look forward to hearing back from you again soon. So I think that this could be a little bit, this was a real student example. Um, this can be changed a little bit more. It sounds a little bit awkward. It sounds like maybe they didn't proofread it. So again, you do wanna make sure that you're proofreading it. But, um, but when you are going through this sample, you're going to see a couple of main things. One, we're indicating what career fair we were at when we were speaking with that individual. We want to mention, you know, that specific company because, again, we walked away with an interest in applying for that company. We're walking away with some of those. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of those skills that we think are going to be valuable to that company in that specific position. And then um, we're also following up with our resume, again, for the electronic version. So that way, hopefully, she can, Miss Thomas can forward it to whoever would need to or whoever is the hiring manager for that position. So before we jump into the tips and the questions and answer section, I do want to just go over some of the major benefits of the career fairs. And I've mentioned this a couple of different times throughout this presentation up to this point, but I think it's really important that before we end today's session that you walk away feeling really confident about why career fairs can be so beneficial for any job seeker. First, you meet a recruiter in person. They love to meet the possible candidates face-to-face -face whenever they can. It's a great way for you to make that first impression. It's also a great way for you to get your resume seen by a recruiter, where traditionally, if you're applying online, again, your resume is typically gonna go through that applicant tracking system first. It's also a great way for you to obtain contact, a contact information and contact name at that organization. Even if they don't have something open and available at this point in time, if you have a contact at that company, you can continually reach out to them, follow up with them. You can follow their company's website and to find their openings. That way you can reach out 
And you can always ask questions whenever an opening does come available that aligns with your interests as to who is the hiring manager or the recruiter so that way you know who to address your cover letter to. You also can use this to contact the recruiter once you have applied to a position as well. You're also going to find that it's also a major benefit because it is that networking component. It's really at the end of the day, when you're going to these career fairs, you're expanding your network. You now have a contact with a recruiter who can either help to con connect you with the right individual in that company or to another individual or person at a different organization. A lot of recruiters know a lot of people at other companies. HR is a field where people jump around pretty often and fairly frequently, and they make a lot of new connections. This means that they might not be able to help you at that specific company, um, but they might know of a way of helping you at another company through their connections as well. It also allows you to gain insight into the company. Because you're meeting and you're getting the opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with someone who's already engrossed in that company, you can learn more about that company's culture. And you can learn more about their hiring trends and what to do to make sure that you're, you're going to seriously be considered for either a current opening or a future opening. It also gives you some interview practice. So again, because you're kind of learning a little bit about that company's culture, you're getting the opportunity to kind of see, well, how would an interview go about if I was interviewed for this company? A job fair is very similar to an interview at the end of the day. Recruiters will let you know what positions that they are hiring for and what you can do to better yourself for future opportunities. They will help you to feel comfortable with talking with recruiters and in a professional environment, which can be a big transition for you depending on where you are in your career and your professional experience. You know, if you never really have had the opportunity to work in a professional setting before, this is a great way for you to gain that interviewing practice. They'll help you to feel comfortable with talking with the with recruiters. Um, they'll help you to feel comfortable with talking with other professionals. And at the end of the day, when you're going to these career fairs, you're able to really kind of get a better feel for your competition. And you might be able to compare what you're doing um, to what those other individuals are doing as well. So what areas are you stronger than your competition in? And what areas are you a little bit weaker in? So that way you can go back, you can work with your career services representative to really kind of focus on honing in those skills. But at the end of the day, these benefits are great, but there are still some things we want to keep in mind when we're going into these career fairs. First thing is that we always want to make sure that we're arriving early. This isn't like a party where you typically don't want to be the first one there. Arriving early will let you to get a good feeling for all of the employers and will help you to do a walkthrough and help you to beat the crowd. By going through and doing a walkthrough, you're going to get a good feel for the lay of the land and you're going to be able to hit maybe some of those employers that you think are going to be driving most of the most of the interest. You'll be able to hit them first so that way you're not necessarily standing in a long line or you're not getting to those employers when they're exhausted or they're tired or they went or they're hungry and they need their lunch break. Um, you know, you'll get that opportunity to go and, and meet with them right away when hopefully they're at their their best and their highest and that you can walk away making one of those first great impressions. If you wait until about halfway through the career fair, you will find that a lot of these recruiters, they do get tired. You know, even though they're extroverts and a lot of times extroverts pull their energy from others, you're going to see that tired recruiters might not necessarily be able to focus on you, or they may have already heard like your type of speech or spiel a million times. And at this point, they don't care about listening to your spiel at, anymore, unless you're gonna find some great magical way to wow them or give them something that someone else hasn't given them. Um, it can just be something where they're just kind of looking through and wondering, okay, it's getting close to the end of the day. What all do I have to do when I go home? You know, what all types of things do I have to do to wrap up my day here at this event? You also want to do a walkthrough of the entire floor first. So it can be very overwhelming when you first go to some of these, some of these career fairs, especially depending on the, the size of these career fairs. Um, if it's one of those general admittance career fairs, it, they're, they're large. Um, so really being able to get the chance to navigate through the floor, understanding where certain employers are located, how, how they're kind of working through meeting different individuals, you know, maybe kind of taking a step back, just focusing and observing what others, other individuals are doing first, that might also help you because it's also going to help you to um, prospect on which employers are going to take more time up of your day. So again, when we're talking about going in with that game plan, when you've done your research about what companies are going to be there, your game plan might change when you get there depending on what the lines and the situation looks like. 
The other thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is that you want to make sure that you're always exuding professionalism. Again, this is your first impression and we want your first impression to really be a, a strong one, one that's going to last with these recruiters for, for a while. You want to leave them wanting to know more about you and wanting you in their organization. Even when you are using the restroom or walking in or out of the building, make sure that you're being professional. Um, they're they're going to notice that even when you're not talking to them. If they see you from across the room, they're going to notice your professionalism at that point in time. You also, like I said before in the very beginning, be prepared. Doing your research on what companies are going to be there is going to be crucial. Doing some research about each of the companies that you want to meet and where you want to meet a recruiter is going to be really critical because you're going to want to have some talking pieces about that company, if at all possible. Make sure again, when we're talking about preparedness, that you're bringing your resumes and that you're preparing your elevator speech and your introduction as to what you feel like are the most important things that you're going to need to provide in an overview about yourself. And then again, don't forget to have questions ready. The great thing about these events, guys, is that you can have the same three questions and pretty much rotate through them um, or the same five questions and pick three every single employer that you go to because they're going to have completely different individuals there. So they're not gonna know that you're pulling from the same question bank. And then lastly, don't forget to be confident. Recruiters are excited to meet people at these events and it's going to make their lives easier if you're confident in who you are, your knowledge, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are and what you have to offer them. Know what jobs you're qualified for and what you're interested in because at the end of the day, that's going to help you to clearly articulate your desires and it's going to help you to become again more professional to them and just make sure that you're enunciating and speaking slowly and clearly when possible i know guys i'm a fast-paced person i tend to speak very quickly so for me if you haven't noticed throughout this presentation you know that's something that is a challenge of mine so that's something that going into these types of events i know that i need to be cognizant of and i need to be really balancing my intonation my speed in my enunciation and really how I am preparing and providing and communicating myself to these prospective employers. So hopefully you now all have a thorough understanding of how to navigate through a career fair. Again, I always encourage you to continue on with your education, obtain a certification or a higher degree as these are going to make you feel more prepared for your future education and your future employment. But I also want to make sure that you guys know that um, that there are always things that you can do to continue to prepare yourselves as professionals. So before we do end today's session, I do just want to open it up to the floor and open the floor up to you guys to see what additional questions or concerns you might have about career fairs. So the first question I see is, what is the most common, I wish I had known this, prior to going into a career fair? Um, that's a great question. I would say the most question I wish I, wish I had known would probably be bring a bottle of water um, and maybe like a, a snack for yourself as well. And if you're gonna bring a snack, you want it to be a non-messy snack, maybe like a granola bar. Um, the one thing that you wanna keep in mind with these events is that you don't wanna be overburdened with like a big bag or satchel or anything like that. but you're going to be interacting with a lot of different people and you're going to be exerting a lot of energy, whether you realize it or not, walking around, talking, introducing yourself, uh, you know, actively listening, it's going to, it can drain you. So you want to make sure that you have um, at least a bottle of water on hand so that way you can drink and you can stay hydrated as you are going through and meeting these individuals. And you also want to make sure that if you are someone, especially if you know that you're going to be attending one of these events around one of your meal times, that um, that you're not going to be hangry because that's the last thing that you want. That's not going to really provide a a good impression to a hiring manager or a recruiter. How will I know if I am monop or I'm sorry? How will I know if I'm monopolizing my time? Eye contact is going to be key. Um, you know, so when we're talking about eye contact with you, with the recruiter, we're also talking about trying to balance and read and interpret what that recruiter's eye contact is saying to you. So if they're looking away from you frequently or looking at other people, um, you want to be cognizant. It's going to help you to kind of know, is there a line behind you? Is it, or is there just one single person that's been patiently waiting for their turn and you kind of have a feel for how long that individual might be standing there? When we're talking about monopolizing time, the one thing that we do want to 
do is we still want to make sure that we're getting our questions answered and we're making our first impression, but we want to make sure that we are not monopolizing that recruiter's time because that recruiter's job in that day and in that moment is to meet as many different individuals and qualified individuals and answer their questions and try and recruit those individuals to want to work for them. This next question is, how many career fairs should I attend in a year? Um, I think it really depends on where you are as a professional. I think, you know, as many as you feel would be beneficial is a good way to go about it. Again, career fairs are a fantastic way to network and meet lots of recruiters. So my advice would be, even if you're not necessarily actively looking for a new job now, it still can be a great tool for you to utilize to your advantage and demonstrate your professionalism wherever possible. So getting those contacts, um, going and, and traveling to them, that that's really going to come in handy, especially um, especially when you were talking about you've identified jobs that you're of interest in a specific company. Now you have a name that you can include on a cover letter that you've already done that, that major work. Uh, this question is, how do I keep track of the organizations that I want to visit and the ones that I've spoken with? So again, that's really going to depend on the, on the career fair. A lot of times recently they've had a lot of these bigger career fairs will have applications for your smartphone um, that you can download that will help you to keep kind of track and, and you can definitely use those to your advantage um, but that's really going to come down to how you prepare for it you know you'll know based off of what the availability is of uh, you know is this some place that's going to have a book when you arrive is it some place that you need to print off information ahead of time is it some place that you're going to have the app on your smartphone that you can use um, to help you to highlight. So just making sure that you're prepared with utilizing whatever resources are available um, and that you have a game plan as far as how you like to stay organized. Again, maybe it's highlighting, maybe it's old school, old fashioned highlighter, circle things on, on, um, on a piece of paper, but that's perfectly fine. Maybe it's creating a notebook or a, a page in your notebook or creating um, a to-do list, you know, whatever way works for you. Um, you just want to make sure that you're utilizing a system that makes sense to you at the end of the day. Oh, this is a great question. How many employers should I seek out in the career fair when I'm there? Um, don't be overzealous. So you'll probably only have the time to hit about 10 employers. So it is important that you're doing your research before you start walking around. See which companies are there, what openings that they're hiring for, and then rank them for the ones that are most fitting to your interest to the least. Um, there's no necessarily like right way to rank the company, but at the end of the day, this is where, again, that research is going to come in hand, um, where you're going to know what companies fit or most closely align with the things that you're most interested in. All right, so that looks like that is all the questions that we have for today. I wanna to thank everyone once again for attending today's session. I hope that you found the information to be beneficial. Should you run into any additional questions or concerns, please, please, please do not hesitate to let me know. I provided my contact information on the screen for you. If you're at one of the ground campuses and you don't know who your career services representative is, you know, please don't hesitate to let me know as well. I can connect you with the proper individual who can assist you and guide you through preparing for your next career fair. But at this point in time, um, the only other thing I would just like to note is that at the conclusion of the presentation, you are going to see a brief survey with four questions. If you could just take a moment just to complete that, it lets us know what additional information, what additional types of seminars that you think will be beneficial for you moving forward. So thank you once again, everyone for attending, and I hope that you all have a wonderful evening.